about it tonight. Dynamic Duel is back. <laughs> Dynamic Duel, you are funny. <laughs> Sister Pam, how are you? Blessings to you. Man, so good to just be yes. with everybody tonight. And Amen. Just spend time with community, all right? Amen. Drake in. Drake in, Sister Rama. Hey. Hey, Arishan. <laughs> Brother Pat, how we doing, my friend? Brother Joseph, amen. Good Hola, scene. Sister Rama. Sister Rama, hola, que tal? Amen. 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 And everybody else. Did we get Sister Yvonne? Oh. Because oh. she's on there, too. All right. Principal Thomas? <laughs> Principal Thomas. What's going on? All right. Minister Min Sabrina? Minister Sabrina. Good yeah. seeing you tonight. Love the hearts. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It is so good to just be here tonight and just be with everybody. Amen. 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 I made Pastor come. Oh, that's okay. That's um the one and only Gigi is <laughs> yeah. on tonight. Mom is on tonight. Mom is on tonight. She okay. let us all know. The one and only. The one and only. <laughs> Sister Lane, blessings. Amen. 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 So we're we're just excited to be here tonight. Amen. 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 Well, Father, we're so thankful. We're so grateful. We look to you tonight. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank mm -hmm. you for your compassion and your kindness. We look to you and we trust you and we just want to be more and more like you. Amen. And so we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. Thank you. Father. We thank you for your mercy and for your compassion. We thank you for your kindness. And so mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh tonight. Encourage yes, us. Build us, strengthen us, edify us, tweak us where we need to be tweaked, mm -hmm. align us where we need to be aligned, encourage us where we need to be encouraged. Amen. Amen. And we trust you to do the work as we rest. I thank you for a greater revelation of Father tonight. Thank you, Father. And because we have revelation from you, it causes us to draw close. It causes us to abide in the secret place. It causes us to remain connected to the Father and the Son, the true vine. You said apart from you, we can do nothing, but through you, we can do all things. Yes. So Father, thank you for revealing your heart and your mind towards us tonight. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and we say thank you and amen. 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 Well, it's very, man, it's just good to be back with everybody and be on. And uh, Pastor Jackie has been doing a tremendous job, and I'm so thankful for her and just mm -hmm. God's grace. And, man, doesn't she look beautiful tonight, you guys? Don't start nothing. <laughs> don't, don't, don't start nothing. Don't man. start nothing. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's, 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 it's so good to just be with her and just see her. And so, amen. Amen. I want to share a couple things tonight. Um, we're in this... Uh, Christmas season where we're celebrating the birth of Christ mm -hmm. and in uh, Matthew chapter one, the angel Gabriel, he appears to Joseph and he gives him some instructions. And one of the instructions that he gives Joseph is he says that um, not to be afraid yeah. to connect with Mary and what's in her is born of God. It's born of a holy seed. And he says, you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Yeah. And so Jesus, his name literally means two things. It means the self-existent or the eternal, but it also means the one who provides refuge, the one who rescues, the one who delivers, the one who really just saves us. And so, Amen. but it's Amen. important that we know not just what God has saved us from, but what has God saved us for? Yeah. We can know that God has saved us from our sins and not know what God has saved us for. And if we really don't understand that part of the process, we really won't connect in relationship. That's good. We'll be forgiven, but we won't be connected. We'll be forgiven, but we won't be whole. We'll be forgiven, but we'll find that we'll still be looking for things. Mm -hmm. We'll still be kind of wandering in this life. And the thing about it is we can go to church and still be wandering. Mm -hmm. We can spend time in the word and still be wandering because Jesus didn't just come to save us from our sins. He came to reconnect us to the Father so that each one of us can know God as Father. We can actually know our Heavenly Father. We can approach Him 
as our heavenly father. We can connect with him as our heavenly father. Amen. And so Bishop Hammond was uh, ministering to us last night. Uh, I'm a part of his legacy course. And uh, he was talking about the ministry of conformity hmm. and what he was sharing with us out of 2 Corinthians 3 coming into 2 Corinthians 4 was that every single believer has this ministry of being conformed to the image and the likeness of the Son. And that ministry, that conformity, that process, that purpose, that work that God is doing in our hearts and minds, that is greater than anything else that Father is doing for us. And if we don't understand that, and if we make something else more important than that work, we will be discouraged very easily mm -hmm. because we'll think, God should be doing something in this area and we'll miss out that in all things, Father is always doing something. In all things, the Holy Spirit is always working on our behalf. He's given us more patience. He's giving us more perseverance. He's teaching us how to have joy. He's teaching us how to be kind in the midst of trials. He's teaching us how to be compassionate even when things aren't moving as fast as we want or things aren't moving the way that we want. He's teaching us ultimately how to trust God as Father. And that's where we kind of want to go tonight, amen? So if you have your Bibles tonight, if you turn to Proverbs chapter 3, amen? Amen. But real quick, like you said, yeah. he's teaching us. That's good. He's, he's conforming us. Yep. That's why we can't keep saying, do you. No, we don't need you to do you. Yeah, that's we need good. Because see, the world will say, do you. That's good. And sometimes the ch people in the kingdom church say, oh, just do you. You got to do you. And it's like, no, how about being conformed to the image of Christ? That's good. So yeah. we need to, um, and so when you, when God reveals that, he said, no, we, we're hearing too much of do you. He's like, no, what about being like me? Yeah, that's good. So he's conforming us, you know, we already created his likeness and his image, but like our, our mind is being renewed each day and, and uh, we should be changing and conforming to him, not like do you. That's good. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's good, Pastor. And, you know, it's interesting because. I was thinking about verse five, very familiar verse, right? Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. But the thing that has come up when I've been in conversation with different leaders and just everyday people in the kingdom mm -hmm. is we don't trust anybody we don't know. Right. That's just a, a common sense principle. And if you're on tonight, and if nobody's ever shared this with you, I want to share this with you as a word of wisdom practically. We shouldn't trust people that we don't know. It is normal not to trust people that we don't know. Trust is something that should be earned over time, not something that should be given just nilly-willy and just free will. It's not something that's given because emotionally we feel a certain way it's not something that we give based upon a person's gifting trust is given when we see a person's character its consistency mm -hmm. and it's unchanging i want to say it again trust is given when we see a person modeling their character consistently Trust is given when we watch people go through trials and we see, man, that person is an example of how I want to be when I go through trials. Right. It is very unwise. It is very foolish. It is very silly to just be handing out trust like it's Monopoly money. Right. All right. Yeah. Right. To just be handing out trust like it's just my monopoly money like right? right trust doesn't grow just like money doesn't grow on trees <laughs> trust doesn't grow on trees yeah. and if a person shows themselves consistently with their fruit to be untrustworthy mm -hmm. we don't have to judge them we right. don't have to talk about them we don't have to gossip what we need to do is take a mental note that I should not be releasing my trust funds to this person, to this organization, to this party, to this culture, to this gender, to this platform, to this arrangement. Amen. And so uh, as I talk with, you know, different leaders and different people, you know, one of the things that has come up is why do we as leaders tell people to trust in the Lord, knowing that they don't know the Lord? Right. 
because yeah. we don't trust someone we don't know. Right. And so as I was thinking about this, the Holy Spirit led me not to start at verse five, but we're going to start at verse one. And it was interesting because when pastor sent out her daily devotion today, <laughs> it was about trusting in the Lord. Amen. So Proverbs chapter three, verse one. It says, my son, do not forget my teaching. So in the context here, we have a father who is addressing his children. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't just have a dad who has given birth to children. There's a difference between a dad giving birth to children and a father who is addressing his children. Mm -hmm. Just because a dad gives birth to a child does not mean that he has necessarily earned the right to speak into the child's life, to address the child, right. to in order for the child to receive, there has to be some consistency mm -hmm. about the father. There has to be some character about that father. There has to be a, a lifestyle mm -hmm. that the child sees, that the child buys into, right. that the child becomes aware of, that the child wants to emulate if yeah. the children are going to listen to the father. Right. Sometimes I think we have dads that haven't really moved into fatherhood yet. Right. And just because we can produce children, right. that does not mean that we are fathering our children. Absolutely. Now, sometimes we're fathering them with the wrong examples. But even mm -hmm. if we are, there's grace for that. Amen. Right. But notice what he says in verse one. He says, my son or my child, do not forget my teaching but keep my commands in your heart. Now, the child will keep the commands. The child will not forget the teaching that they see the father doing, not that they see the father teaching. Right. Yes. Okay, let me say that again. Yeah. The child will, will, will follow the teaching. The child will honor the teaching. The child will follow the commands. I was talking with Miles earlier today. And we were talking about a situation and he was reminding me of some things that I had shared with him. And our relationship turned the corner many, many years ago when he had a chance to look at my fruit and to make decisions based upon my fruit, mm -hmm. not just on me being his dad. So basically not what you say. That's good. But what you display. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Amen. That's good. Not yeah. what you say. That's good. It's what you display. That's good. Because the fruit is evident. You can see fruit. That's what you are displaying, the fruit. That's good. So that's what people we are seeing. That's good. That's Amen. good. Amen. But keep my commands in your heart. In other words, I want my voice to be in your belief system so mm -hmm. that when you have to make decisions, not that I'm controlling you, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely influencing you. Right. <laughs> right. Not that I'm controlling you, but I'm definitely influencing you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then notice what he says about the teaching that he submitted to and that he's living. He says, for they, the teaching and the commands will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Two things he says to his child. He's saying, if you follow my example, you can have a great quality of life yeah. and you can have a long quantity of life yeah. yeah if you follow my example you can have a great quality of life peace and prosperity will be your friend and you can have long life you can prolong your life you can extend your life you can not only exist see sometimes when we don't have the right fathering we're, we're existing. We're not really living. Right. We're, we're always dealing with problems. We're moving from one problem to the next. Mm -hmm. We're moving from one relationship to the next. We're moving from one situation to the next. And we're discouraged and we're depressed. And all of it is because we haven't graduated from existing to living because we haven't really seen an example to pursue. Right. We haven't seen fathers who have a great quality of life. Now, I'm not saying that, amen, that they have to be super rich, but right. what in terms of material things, but they're rich in wisdom. 
They're rich in compassion. Yes. They're rich in hope. They're rich in being secure. They're rich in understanding. They're rich in kindness. Watch this. They're rich in investing in the child. They're rich in pulling out the best in the child. Mm -hmm. They're rich. Their words are rich in their children's lives. Yes. Their words make a difference in their children's lives. Their words have great impact in their lives. Amen. You know what? Just real quick. And when their words are rich in their children's lives, um, it will keep not when the enemy tries to come and infiltrate. That's good. They'll hear the father's words. That's good. Amen. Yeah. It's like a safeguard from because the enemy will come and or people will come and different words will come. They're like, oh, that don't sound like my father. That's good. Because my father has uh, deposited something in me. So when the uh, a serpent or whoever is trying to come and, and you know into that garden they're like no nope, that doesn't sound like my daddy that's good amen that's good amen. that's good that's good let love and faithfulness never leave you the reason love and faithfulness never leaves the child because they see their father operating in love and faithfulness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they see their father in love and faithfulness to their God. Mm -hmm. They see their father in love and faithfulness to their mom. Yep. They see their father in love and faithfulness to their family. They see their father in love and faithfulness to their neighbors and their community. Yes. They see all of this long before they get to the local church. Yes. They see this all day, every day. So by the time they get to church, they just see their father being their father. Yeah. They see their father pray. Yep. They see their father spend time in the word. They see their father confess their sin. Mm -hmm. They see their father loving on mom and hugging mom and encouraging mom. <laughs> they see mom, they see dad cooking dinner with mom. They see them doing chores together. Mm -hmm. They see these things. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Their father has a good name. Amen. And because their father has a good name and they see the blessing and the benefits of having a good name, that's what they want. They want to have a good name yeah. because they see the blessing and the benefit of these things. Yes. Now, here's what's amazing about all of this. When they see all of these things, now their father isn't perfect. That's why they see their father apologizing. That's why when their father is in pride, their father talks to them about pride, not just from the scripture, but he makes sure to put his own personal life yes. on front page. He makes sure to share with them. You know, I was in pride. You know, um, yeah. I didn't make the right decision here. You know, I didn't really walk in humility. You know, I didn't really wait on the Lord. Yeah. And when they see these things, what happens in their heart, watch this, this is so important, mm -hmm. is trust explodes and trust trust is the natural process of all these things yeah so that by the time we get to verse five when he says trust in the lord they see what the lord has done in their father's life and they're convinced that they can trust in the lord because they've seen the lord work they've seen the lord transform and they've seen their father trust in the Lord. So trust is just an extension of these things. So that by the time we get to verse five, trust is a normal response. So when the father says to the children, trust in the Lord with all your heart, they're like, yeah, I can do that because I've seen my dad do it. I can get down with that because my dad isn't taking me to church and doing one thing, and when we get home, doing something else. My dad doesn't have three and four and five and six and eight different lives. Mm -hmm. My dad isn't perfect, but watch this. My dad is consistent. Yes. My dad is great because of grace. Mm -hmm. My dad is great because of what God has done in his life. My dad is great because he pursues godliness, yeah. not as a law, not as legalism, but through relationship. And so as I was thinking through this, I realized that sometimes 
When we don't understand these first four verses and when we don't live out these first four verses, we're trying to tell people to do verse five without walking verse one through four out in front of them or showing them and then showing them the steps that you go through to learn how to trust in the Lord with all of your belief system. And notice what he says in verse five, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Yeah. And here's what I wanted to share. Friends, sometimes our understanding can be the biggest enemy of trust. <laughs> yes. Sometimes it's been my understanding, mm -hmm. wanting things when I want them, <laughs> wanting things the way that I want them, wanting things to happen, and it has to happen this way. If you're God, you have to do it this way. Mm -hmm. And what happens is sometimes my understanding becomes my idol and my God. Yeah. That is the biggest thing that is blocking me from trust. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Now watch this. He didn't say just throw understanding out the window. <laughs> I want to be clear here. Right. Right. We're not saying, right. I, I tell people this. When you come to AGK, make sure to bring your head. Yes. Make sure to bring your brain. Yes. Make sure to bring your mind. Make sure to bring common sense. Yes. Make sure to think. You know, sometimes we have this definition that being spiritual means I just throw my brain out the window. I just throw common sense to the wind. Right. I'm just going to be spiritual. Right. For example, you guys, <laughs> when I want to hear God talk to me, you know, the first place I go to, I go to his word. Yes. When I get up in the morning, I don't go sit in a room and sit in a lotus position and <laughs> clear my mind and right. wait for some voice to speak to me. Now, I'm not hating on that, right. but here's the point I want to make. If a voice does speak to me, how am I going to know if it's the voice of the Father if I don't have enough of his word in me? Right. So I go to the word. That's why my word life is what helps me discern if God is speaking to me, mm -hmm. whether it's through an impression, whether it's through a thought, whether it's through other people. Somebody may try to prophesy to me and they may be off. And because I've got enough of the word yes. in me. I can protect myself. I can That's protect it. my heart. That's why AGK is built on the word of God, yes. the scripture, and not the gift of prophecy. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's built on the gift of scripture. Yes. Amen. Because prophecy won't necessarily conform your life to the image of Jesus. It may give us direction. It yes. may be a word of wisdom. It may be a word of knowledge. It right. may be faith. It may bring healing. Right. But ultimately, it's the word of God. Yes. It's time in the word yes. that conforms us to the image. Yes. So my question tonight is simply this, friends. Have we really understood the first four verses or is verse five one of our favorite verses mm -hmm. that we just kind of pick out and then just kind of either throw at people or throw out on Sunday morning mm -hmm. or throw towards something that we want? Yeah. Because remember, it starts off my son. So the yeah. context is a father who is sharing, yeah. who is walking in front of his children, who yeah. is demonstrating yes. the kingdom in front of his children yeah. and his life, yeah. his choices, his decision making, his attitude, his mindset, yeah. his disposition. Right. What would what would our children say is our consistent attitude and disposition? Mm -hmm. Is it God like That's good. or is it man like? Is it shaped by the world? Is it shaped by work? Or is it shaped by worship? Yeah. Because kids, people, excuse me, our kids are watching. That's good. And, and it's funny because you'll hear some parents, they're using different words, colorful words or language. And then the kids start using the colorful language. Yeah. You shouldn't be saying that. Yeah, that well, you're me. modeling that in front of them. Yeah, so me. whatever you model in front of them, that's what they're picking up. That's good. And so they're watching, even if you're not like saying, you're not sitting down and saying, you need to use those words. No, they're watching what you do and they're gleaning from that. Right. So whether it's good or bad, they're watching. 
That's good. That's good. Because in Malachi 4, uh, the prophet Malachi said that he would send the prophet Elijah. Mm -hmm. He would put a prophetic word in him. He said that word would turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Yes. And so I grew up in a generation where I was taught, do as I say, not as I do. Right. And that was an impartation. Mm -hmm. And I brought that with me into the kingdom. And so that impartation was fighting against the lifestyle that Jesus wanted me to live. Yes. And then I found out that God had graced me to do ministry. And so I had this impartation that was inconsistent with the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I had this gift to do ministry and I was trying to push all of that. And the Lord was like, well, let me shut this down before you even get going. Dude. <laughs> because I don't want you to make these things. I don't want you to make inconsistencies. I don't want you to make ministry and serving other people more important than my primary ministry, yeah. which is what? Yeah. Conforming yeah. us to the image of Christ. Yeah. And so when he says that that word will turn the hearts of the fathers to the, he said that word will first turn the hearts of the children to the father. Mm -hmm. In other words, he said, I'm going to do something in the previous generation that wins the next generation back. Yeah. It's called humility. Yeah. It's called repentance. Yes. It's called, man, I missed it. It's called, you know what? I was being religious because I didn't understand relationship. Yeah. Because again, it's not just about what Jesus saved us from. It's about what he saved us for. So when we think about Christmas, when we think about the baby in the manger who was born king of the Jews, <laughs> when we see the Christ in the manger, we have to understand not just what he saved us for, but what he saved us from. Excuse me. Not just what he saved us from, but what he saved us for. Yeah. So I just wanted to encourage you guys tonight. I just, you know, this is something the Lord has really been ministering to me. And I just wanted to share this and just really be a blessing tonight. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pastor, anything you want to add? It was just really good because sometimes we are a product of our environment. Yes. And because of it's our, it's our training and it's like, oh, he's just taking us up out of one place and say, okay, you learned this, you clean from that. Yes. But it's like he's reteaching us and retraining us. Yes. Um, growing up in a, a system yeah, that's I, I thought you know just going to church yeah. close scriptures yeah, doing, because that's what i saw yeah that's good and then i looked like okay but i wasn't changing yeah, and good. so i was being conformed to what i saw around me yeah, where good. people were like hard everything was religious and rules i mean er, i mean and i'm not saying you throw everything out because some stuff you know it's like we don't got we can go to the extremes right but when he says no there's more to this there there's more uh that you're missing. That's I good. need to be uh, not conformed to that church, but conform to Jesus' image that's and his good. likeness. Yeah, because good. you learn traditions. You learn, I knew how to go to church, dress yeah, the church. Yeah, sing, I know I know all the you know the religious things we did, yeah, but good. didn't know him. Yeah. And didn't hear a lot about being conformed to, you know, how he how he uh, how he was. You know what I mean? How he is. How it was more about uh the presentation yeah. of performing. Yeah. Not about being more like Jesus. That's good. Yeah. You know, that's good. And, you know, when the Lord sends John the Baptist, mm -hmm. John's name means Jehovah favored or grace. And one of the things that Gabriel tells his father is that he will turn, he will bring back many of the people of mm -hmm. Israel to the Lord, their God. Yeah. And so when God gets ready to bring us back, he doesn't bring rules. He doesn't bring legalism. Right. He doesn't bring the law. He sends grace. Yeah. It's the goodness of the Lord that, leads, that us. leads us to repentance. That's good. It's his goodness yeah. of the Lord that leads us to repentance. That's good. Not all these laws and rules. It's yeah. the goodness of the Lord yeah, that's that good. leads us to repentance. That's good. And so grace is our friend. Yeah. Grace is our companion. Grace is our teacher. Grace is our empowering, mm -hmm. enabling, receiving nature of Christ Yes, that makes us. It, yes, it's undeserved and yeah. it's unearned, but grace meets us yeah. and grace helps us not just turn the corner. Yeah. 
but grace helps us keep turning the corner. Right. And then grace helps us not to sneak back around the corner. <laughs> Because we can turn the corner, yeah. and sometimes we can keep turning the corner. And sometimes, if you like me, our flesh wants to go back around the corner, right. but grace will keep us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Stay so, in grace. Stay in grace. That's I'm good. Telling you. Stay in grace. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's stay good. in grace. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Amen. 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 Well, family, we just wanted to come on tonight and be a blessing, and just kind of share this again. We're in this Christmas season. We're celebrating the birth of Christ, mm -hmm. but we're pressing into not just what he saved us from, but what he saved, saved us for. for. Amen. 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 Pastor, can you pray for us tonight? I sure can. Amen. Um, so, Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for your word on tonight, Lord God. We thank you right now, God, that is a word in due season. We thank you, Father God, for all those who have been on tonight and those who will even hear this word later. We thank you right now, Father God. Um, just for a fresh word on tonight that you've given to us, Lord God. I thank you for your grace and your mercy on tonight. I thank you right now for the teachings that you've given us, Lord God, that we can be more like you, Lord God. I thank you right now. It wasn't from a religious place, but from a place of grace, Lord God. I thank you for your servant who uh, gave out your word on tonight. And I thank you that all hearts and minds are receiving this on tonight, even those who will listen to this word later, Lord God. And I thank you in all these things that you be glorified, you be magnified in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, we've been walking with the Lord for at least 25 years. And like Abra Abram and Sarai, Sarai, one of the things that God has been doing in both of our hearts is he's been teaching us what it means to be fully persuaded. Yeah. And here's the good news, friends. Fully persuaded doesn't mean you always do everything right. We don't? No. We don't do always no. everything right? No. I, don't, I don't always do everything I right. I know I don't. So yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> but fully persuaded means that there are things in our lives that are consistent, yeah. including when we miss the mark. Yeah. Including yeah. when we fall short. Yeah. Yeah. So, friends, uh, me and my wife, we're, we're, we're learning. Amen. Right. We're trusting in God's grace like yes. everybody else. We're seeking the yeah. Lord, you know, in the midst of working and leading and mm -hmm. family and serving. Yeah. Right. We have to be reminded from time to time that, hey, we got to have time for our relationship, not yes. just with the Lord. Yes. But with each other. Each other. You know, yeah. sometimes when you're leading, you can make time for everybody else. You can be great at work yeah. and you can ignore the two relationships that have to have priority. Yeah. Our relationship with God. Yeah. Relationship with each other. Amen. Are you trying to get a kiss? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ooh. I had to make sure. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, no, you know, God just gives, uh, brings balance in our life. That's good. Amen. Yeah. And for every area, balance. That's good. Amen. Every balance. And when you're in, 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 in when you're staying in grace, you will find balance. That's good. Yeah. Amen. That's good. You can, I can always tell when I'm out of balance because I ain't staying in grace. Ooh. Yeah. So what's that look like practically? Man, I'm all over the place. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Like, you're yeah. not in grace. Yeah. I'm short. I'm just doing all. I'm just got hands and everything. Just yeah. doing something. It's like, guys, like, you're doing too much. Yeah. yeah Amen. Good. Yeah, for me, you can tell my attitude. Yeah. I'm not as loving and compassionate. I can be short. Yeah. I can be quick. Mm -hmm. I kind of have a bite. Yeah. And that's one of the ways that I realized, nope, you just you need you need some daddy time, you need some lap time. Right. Yeah. And that's okay. Look, we just being transparent. Because I I don't want you guys to think we over here floating. Right. Right. <laughs> we right. not floating when right. we get off live. Right, right. right. Hey, Amen. It's not Amen. all that stuff, we you know. So hey, man. it's gonna be a blessing. I'll Amen. let you do that part. Hey, man. Well, if there's there's uh two ways if you'd like to be a blessing, we pray that you were encouraged by what you heard tonight. And if you'd like to <laughs> sow into uh, what the Lord is doing in our ministry. Uh, the first one is from a cash app perspective, mm -hmm. uh, all one word, dollar sign, advancing God's kingdom. Uh, the second thing is you can go to our website, agkm.net, and yes. you can give. Also, while you're there, if you have prayer requests, we'd love for you to leave your prayer requests there so we can agree with you. And we are excited. We're thankful. And we love you guys. Mm -hmm. And we're just grateful. Amen. <laughs> Again, we want to thank everybody. That was a part of being a blessing for Pay at the Pump. Amen. Yes, that was wonderful. Without you guys, we couldn't have done it. December 19th, we've got a number of, another event coming. Amen. Uh, it's a surprise event, so we won't be giving many details. <laughs> but 
Amen. If you'd like to be a part of that, amen, you can sow financially into what we're doing there. Amen. And we're trusting the Lord. Amen. We're so excited. We're just, I'm just uh, very happy for our family, the AJK family, and those who uh, God has just entrusted us with. It's just, it's just wonderful. And I seen somebody, I think they said, uh, when I said Sunday, go to bed, somebody typed it in. They said, go to bed. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you got to get some rest. And I will share this and we'll get off. I laughed the other night. I, was, I have been sleeping so great. Yesterday morning, I woke up when my alarm went off. I said, honey, is it Wednesday? He was like, no. it's only I was out. So um, I literally had been going to bed and staying in my rest. Amen. So look, sometimes, you know, you got to spend your time with the Lord. And sometimes you just got to get some rest. That's good. And it's okay to get rest. Amen. 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 So family, we love you guys. We love you. We look forward to seeing you Sundays at 10 a.m. Yes, if you can be there, please be in the place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, it's nothing, I mean, it's, I, I, Facebook, Facebook Live is good, I get it. Yeah. But nothing like, be. I love seeing the people. Amen. Love them, amen. If you can't be there, don't yeah. just log on, let people know. Yeah. Amen. Share the good news, share what God is doing in your life. Amen. And, and uh, let's continue to increase our footprint in the community. That's amen. right, I love that. Yeah. Increase our footprint in the yeah. community, Amen. Right, because we're establishing people in community. Y'all know how we roll. You got to be there. You got to be, be there. there. Amen. Amen. We love you guys, and we'll see you soon. Blessings.